Having not owned a desktop mic, I thought it might be quite fun to make one. Looking around, even second hand, uh, they seem to hold their price really well and new ones are quite expensive. So I got on the design software the intent to make a desktop microphone for one of my radios for about five pounds. Now, I came up with a very simple and basic design here. Uh, I was going to be utilizing two of the simple little lever micro switches that I've used in other projects, which would provide the switching function and also the spring return function for the push button, making this, making this a nice, easy and simple solution. Um, so I spent some time configuring the, the base of the unit and a cover and a PTT button. Um, I've, I've gone really with just a practical function here. I mean, this is a, again like a prototype as well, so it's something that could be refined. But um, I was really pleased how this started to come together, in particular the microphone element, which I spent a little bit of time making here. And I've made it so you could fit a simple condenser microphone into any one of the four holes, but it could easily be adapted to suit a dynamic mic, which tend to be a little bit bigger in size. Um, so the idea was to put a captive nut inside the back cap of this and screw a stainless steel bolt through the entire lot to keep it pinched up and together. Now you'll notice on the final version there is some washers on this on the bolt holding this together. I didn't have the uh, sharp enough saw to cut the bolt down so uh, I might even 3D print a little cap to go over it. But anyway as you can see there in 3D um, it, uh, it certainly looks the part, I think, anyway. Um, very sturdy and and, uh, just, and see what you think anyway when it finally rolls off the printer. And here is the microphone element. Now for this I use some very um, nice, uh, I'll put a link in the description actually, some very nice PLA which prints off with a very nice silver finish. Now I haven't completely cleaned up the uh, the model here in the inside, but it's ready for uh, for manufacture, so to speak. Um, so I was really pleased with how the first piece of this came out. And also I use the same material for the switch guard. Now uh, within the switch guard there, the wires from the switch will run underneath that capping and into the back of the microphone. And there is the very basic and simple PTT bar. And the switches will support the weight of this bar, but, but also I obviously provide the mechanical switching facility for the uh, PTT circuit. Now, what happened there with the glued section was I had a problem with my reel of PLA. And uh, so I did actually, actually physically have to make a little joining piece to uh, rather than reprint the whole base again. But that wasn't a design fault. That was just a, a, a batch manufacturing fault with the actual PLA. So anyway, I've got a nice range of motion on the head of the microphone there, which I'm really, really pleased with. The finish on the, the base has come out really, really nice as well. Uh, again, I'm just using the Creality um, Ender 3 professional printer for this, a £200 printer. And there you can see as I just drop those pieces on top of the uh, assembly, you can see how it basically fits together. It's very, very basic and simple. Uh, this is the bolt I mentioned <laughs> with the uh, stack of washers. And uh, unfortunately, stainless steel is quite hard to cut and I haven't got a decent enough saw. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It will pinch it all together. So just slide the bolt in there. Unplug the um, the connector to the radio, which is your RJ45 type of connector. And uh, I haven't noticed that there is a desktop mic option available for this radio. Um, so what I did was I downloaded the product manual because I remember seeing on the uh, product manual a pinout for that connector, which was very useful. So on the Anytone website, I went and picked up the, um, the mic connector circuit diagram, which details each connection. Now there's some that we won't be using but we've got um, the microphone co connection and we've also got the PTT and the ground connection. Now at first I thought the, uh, the, the PTT connection could simply be grounded but that wasn't the case. After doing a little bit of investigation with the meter it did seem that there was actually a potential required on that input and that input then had to be grounded. I guess this is to ensure that uh, you know that the, the radio is keyed logically um, so um, with that, I stripped off an RJ45 cable and connected. Uh, I did some, some tests on, on the original microphone here, as you can see, and actually found out that it was a 3.3 volt uh, signal that drops to ground. So it's obviously being decked to ground. Um, so what I had to do to get this to actually work was to actually create a very simple potential divider circuit. Now, the microphone circuit provides 5 volts. Uh, as standard for the illumination keys and also for the logic within the mic. 
And so what I did was just put a 3K3 and a 1K7 resistor in a, as a potential dividing network and connected up the PTT switches in series, sorry, in parallel uh, with, with that 1K7 resistor. And before I actually wired this into the microphone, I actually did a basic breadboard test with this configuration there and just using a piece of solder wire there between the two to act as the PTT. I, uh, I had this all hooked up to the radio and uh, did, a, did a, a test transmission. Now it was a little bit hit and miss at first. I think it was just a bit of a bad joint there, but as you can see, if you look at the meter in the top right hand corner there, which is the power meter, I've just got a dummy load plugged into the back of the power meter. You can see there, as I was tapping away on the resistor there, we were getting, uh, getting it to transmit okay. So I was happy that that part of the circuit would work. So I fished out um, an old electret microphone that I had from a project kit of parts. Now I did find out, find when I did a bit of testing that the audio was a little bit low. So what I did, and this might not be the case if you make one of these, I inserted one of these inexpensive inline little uh, audio amplifier uh, devices just to bring the audio up and make it adjustable. So uh, this is something worth doing. Again, I'll put a link in the description for this. So I'll push you over to me. Right, let's do a quick test. Got it plugged into the radio up there. And what we'll do, we'll stick the FT70D in the other room. FT70D in the other room, and then we'll record that and we'll see what it sounds like. I'm not expecting it to sound quite as good as the original, uh, but we'll see. This is G7LNK testing. 7 lnk testing the new microphone. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Right, I hope you've enjoyed this. I managed to make this microphone for roughly £5, maybe a little bit over. Had a lot of fun doing it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you want to make one of these yourself, just drop me a line and I'll email you over the STL files. Uh, in the meantime, if you have been watching, I apologise for the bit of a delay. Um, I've been away, the whole family has come down with the, uh, the worldwide flu there, so I've been out of action for about a month, but hoping to get back up and sticking some more videos out. So if you have been, thanks ever so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care.